Growing calls to unseal a nearly 40-year-old report into no Nazis living in Canada prompted mixed reaction on Parliament Hill today, as you heard there. The information was redacted and never released when it was studied back in the 80s. The calls to unseal those records are coming in the wake of Parliament applauding a veteran in the House of Commons gallery during Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's visit, who it turned out fought with a Nazi unit. Joining me now is the head of one group calling for that information to be made public. Michael Mostyn is the CEO of Benai Birth Canada. Hi, Mr. Austin, good to have you back on our program. Thank you for making the time. Thanks for having me, Vash. I think you could hear in those clips uh, a little bit of hesitancy on the part of some members of Parliament about kind of this falling into the category of history and some of the considerations uh, they would be weighing in unsealing those records. How do you respond to that? Well, I'd say that history has been brought into the present. Uh, when, um, when a Nazi, a member of the 14th Waffen-SS Galician Division, was applauded by members of every political party in Parliament. So uh, this is an issue that we have to deal with today. Um, of course, the report uh, looking into Nazis, Nazi perpetrators who found their way into Canada was issued about 40 years ago at this point. But it's extremely relevant. It is extremely hurtful. And I would add, not just to the Jewish community and to other victims of the Nazis, but in fact to all Canadians. I've been hearing nonstop how upsetting it is that this issue is going and going. We don't know what was in those records. We don't know what's in the archives. So I, I do find it a little strange that some members of Parliament are commenting that they should not be opened. Uh, we should be moving forward with the truth. We should be moving forward with the rule of law and proper access to information in this in this country. And um, and the only way to move forward at this point, I think everybody should realize, is to confront um, the details, unfortunately, of the fact that Nazis were allowed into this country post-war. I think that for a lot of Canadians watching right now, uh, they might not even know of the existence of that commission because, as you mentioned, it, it did happen 40 years ago. It was uh, at the at the call of, of then Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. That commission uh, looked very specifically at Nazis who immigrated to Canada. Can you, uh, from your perspective, explain to people watching what portion of that, uh, I mean, like what you know about why some of it was not released? Uh, so that's an, it's an excellent question, Vashi. And again, I would only be speculating because when Justice Duchesne was um, uh, given permission and, and to launch this inquiry and put forward the report, what was told to Canadians was that this report would be open to the public. That didn't end up happening. Um, sections of the report, despite B'nai B'rith and other groups repeatedly requesting it, have been redacted. Um, some of it is because um, there were perpetrators. There were names of individuals, Nazis, who were let into this country. Some of them war criminals. Um, now, a lot has changed in 40 years. Um, Mr. Hunka is still alive at the age of 98, but presumably many of the Nazis who were let into Canada have passed away. And so there certainly are questions about privacy uh, laws in this country, which uh, apply uh, for 20 years after death. And, and those issues should certainly be looked into. But a lot has changed in 40 years. And now is the time we have not heard from the government, from any previous government, um, why this report was ever redacted. And mm -hmm. Canadians deserve to know this answer because the world, not just Canada, the world are still, is still asking this question, why are we not being told the truth? Why are the Nazi files still a secret in this country? And, and do you think that it has informed in any way what, over the weekend, former Justice Minister Erwin Kotler described as the indifference that the events of uh, 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 what happened in the House of Commons kind of put on display of many Canadians to the facts of our history? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's in some ways shocking that, that Canadians don't know their own history uh, because we were indifferent. We were indifferent to the victims of the Holocaust when we did not allow those refugees who were desperate uh, to find their way into this country during the Holocaust. And we were also indifferent to many Nazis coming in, individuals who our government and successive governments understood were perpetrators of atrocities against many individuals. Um, and, and there were no prosecutions. There were no deportations. 
um, uh, often many, many appeals taking place. Uh, and even when Canada did have an opportunity at certain points in times to deal a measure of justice and deal with certain issues with Nazis, that did not happen. Uh, it's very interesting, too, because this is uh, an opportunity, we believe, for the Prime Minister uh, to show some real leadership here. We, we do value the fact that it has now been pushed to some senior civil servants in the government mm -hmm. to look into uh, the details and to begin um, their pathway to opening up the records, hopefully, to Canadians. But the, the Prime Minister has not yet issued all of his mandate letters uh, to his various ministers in the government. Mm -hmm. And um, Anita Anand, who is the President of the Treasury Board, B'nai B'rith has been advised, has carriage of this file in terms of the necessary changes needed to the Access to Information Act to get this information. So we would ask that the Prime Minister give a mandate letter to, to President of the Treasury Board, Anita Anand, and that, and that mandate letter has to include the need for, for government transparency on Holocaust files. Okay, uh, I appreciate that information and uh, your insights this evening. Thank you so much, Mr. Mostyn. Thanks, Bashi.